Do you think I'll ever need your views more than you need me? Show me your true color subs, I just want to see. Cause I done had LDBC come around and change on me. Subs screaming, please don't waste my time. I say I totally agree. See subs, I'm fine with that. I done gave my watches away, ain't got no time for that. Asking where my heart, good luck finding that. How long can I see subs run? Still think I'm timing that. Think I'm still timing that. Pretty pick with a nice demeanor. I'm in a live, it was nice to meet ya. White bitter, no elongated teeth. <laughs> I love Kevin Gates. My bad, y'all. And I'm not trying to steal nobody's swag. I just thought that was funny. Um, anyways, we're gonna speak on Dillian White. Dillian White is a very funny person. He did a live today, not a live, an interview with Sky Sports Boxing. And uh, pretty much he said he believed Deontay Wilder was scared of him. He said he doesn't know what he has to do. He thinks at this point he's going to go meet Deontay Wilder in a bar, knock him out and run off with his belt like a thief. Funny dude. Um, yesterday he was talking about Lucas Ortiz and in the interview, he was talking about, yeah, you know, Ortiz is like 40 years old. Like two minutes later in the thing. Yeah, he's like 50 years old. Like three minutes later in the interview. You know, Ortiz is like 60 years old. I loved how I kept going up and I had a conversation with somebody where I did the same thing. So I thought that was very funny that he said the same shit I said. Hilarious. Hilarious dude. This is why I love Dillian White. And you know what? I cannot understand how people are still calling this man a drug cheat. That's like saying somebody's a murderer without any evidence to prove that they murdered somebody. Just because, say, a murderer got, or somebody uh, accused of murdering somebody gets arrested for that murder, doesn't mean they did it. You go to trial, and at trial, you find out if that person is innocent or guilty. That's the problem with America. That's the problem with the world today. People are guilty until proven innocent. Nowadays, that's how it is. You're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. And my thing is this. I said a while back I would stop covering Dillian White until the facts came out. Well, as I explained in my last video I put up about Dillian White, I believe the proof is in the pudding now. He would not be having another fight in Saudi Arabia if he was going to get banned. Eddie Hearn would not put him on another fight card if he was going to get banned. I don't believe the UCAB would have cleared him to fight had he really have failed a drug test. So. People keep bringing up the B sample, the B sample, the B sample. And from my understanding, from what I've been reading, Dillian White does not have to provide a B sample. See, I just learned this recently. Because Dillian White went in front of the board and had a mock trial, so to say, and won that trial and won the right to fight um, Rivas, that means he doesn't have to give any more information. He's won. He was cleared. End of story. So the thing is, we don't know what was said in that mock trial. We don't know what went through, but it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. The bottom line is he passed. He got cleared for one fight, and here he is going into a second fight. Now, how do I look at this fight? Marius, I don't know much about him. I would sit here and lie if I said I've ever watched him fight. If I have seen him fight, I don't recall it. And he's 39 years old. Now, a lot of people were knocking Deontay Wilder for fighting Ortiz, who says he's 40, but nobody believes that because Ortiz made a comment that he watched Rumble in the Jungle live on TV when he was five, which would mean he's really 50. If not 50, he's 49 going on 50. <clears throat> As Rumble in the Jungle happened in 74, which means he was born in 69. So that's a 50-year-old man by his own mouth. Like, he said that. You can't take that back. Now, if you would have said recorded on TV, that would have been different. And maybe there was a loss in translation. I don't believe Luis Ortiz is really 40. He looks much older, but that's irrelevant. Because, as I said, I believe Deontay Wilder put on a beautiful fight against Ortiz, regardless of what the critics are saying, and the pay-per-view numbers don't even matter. I don't understand what's happened with boxing, and I'll get back to Dillian White in a minute. I don't understand what happened in boxing to where... Who has the higher viewerships means they're the better fighters. 
You either get views or you don't get views. You got people all across the board in all avenues of life who are very talented and the best that people don't like and somebody less talented might get more shine than them. You got some, you got people at jobs who never get the credit they're due even though they're holding the whole company on their back. It's just sometimes personalities don't translate over. Sometimes people who aren't as good just have that charisma about them that make people gravitate towards them. So therefore, they're more liked. Therefore, if you're more liked, you're going to get more views. It has no dictation on how good you are or how successful you are. Now, in Deontay Wilder's case, <coughs> and I'm getting to a point, I believe his low viewerships is because he has evaded fighters that he should have been fighting by this point. But I believe with the Tyson Fury rematch, if he comes through that, and I honestly believe he can come through it, I'll do a breakdown on it. Um, I see him fighting from there on guys like Dillian White, AJ, um, Ruiz, Parker, etc. as I explained before. So let me get off Deontay Wilder and get back to Dillian White. And I brought Wilder up for a reason. The reason why I brought up Wilder and having low views is for things like this. Dillian White received a text message from Deontay Wilder talking about he'll get freezed out for two years. And he showed the text message, so it's not like Dillian White's lying about this. I've never heard of a heavyweight champion in the history of boxing outside of a movie about boxing where a champion will just blatantly text somebody and say, I'm going to freeze you out. I'm not going to fight you. Especially when it's a mandatory. A mandatory for over 600 days when this was posted, which was in his last fight six months ago. Six months is 180 days. So we could say at least a 780 days, but it's been more than that. It's probably closer to 800 days right now <laughs> that he's been the number one mandatory of the WBC. Understandable that he lost it to Tyson Fury when all that stuff was going on about UCAD. Understandable. But after that Tyson Fury fight, he should be back there. Number one. From the interview, it seemed that Dillian White really wanted to fight Deontay Wilder by the comments that he was making throughout the interview. And another thing that a lot of people don't like to bring up about Deontay Wilder, and you'll always hear the LDBC talking about, oh, <clears throat> Deontay Wilder gave him a shot. He gave him a shot. He gave him a shot. He said, all you got to do is fight Ortiz, 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 and Dillian White backed out. But that's not the whole story. See, you can watch many YouTube videos on this where Dillian White is in public stating this. And by all means, look it up. Dillian White agreed to fight Luis Ortiz. He agreed to it. He said, the only stipulation I have is if I fight Luis Ortiz and win, you give me a title shot, and by that, you will sign a contract stating that when I beat him, I will fight you next. Deontay Wilder backed out of it. That is why we never saw the Luis Ortiz and Dillian White fight. Had <coughs> nothing to do with Dillian White being scared. <coughs> Had nothing to do with him running away from the fight. That's the real reason. Now, back to Dillian White and this fight coming up. Like I said, I don't know much about this fight. I know the guy that he's fighting has never been knocked out. But then again, he's 39 years old. So if Dillian White knocks him out... You got to understand that that kind of takes away from the credibility of the fight because the guy's coming in with five losses already. So even though it might be an achievement to knock a guy out who's never been knocked out, when you knock him out later in their career, it doesn't count for as much. But at the same aspect, I look at this fight like Deontay Wilder versus Luis Ortiz. I felt like Wilder needed that for himself to prove that he didn't need no help. From the referee, he could beat Ortiz on his own, and that's what he did in the rematch. This fight right here, I see it as just a tune-up fight, and it's also a short-notice fight. It's not like Dillian White's going into this with a lot of time. Like, they just announced this on, what, the 26th? And he's fighting on the 7th? <clears throat> so you talking about, what, two weeks? A little over two weeks to prep? 26. Hold on. So we got one, two, three, four, five days. Not even two weeks. Not even two weeks to prep for this fighter. So by it being a not so big of a threat, even though he might be a threat with short notice, we saw what happened with AJ and Ruiz. And I'm not saying that Ruiz is the only one because of short notice, but you can never underestimate somebody in heavyweight boxing. 
<laughs> one bunch can change everything. And being that this is in Saudi Arabia, where hopefully it's at night, and even at night, it can be hot as shit over there. I've been to the Middle East. It can be hot. And Dillian White's always had endurance issues down the stretch. That heat will only add to, to your endurance issues, especially if you have it acclimated to the different environment. And I'll do another video on traveling. Why me personally, if I could ever stay healthy and stop getting injured when I get back into pro boxing, I would not travel if I have a belt. I'm not going to England. I'm not going to Europe. I'm not going anywhere. Anywhere. Fuck that. Not if I have the belt because there's a lot of things that hit you that are different that actually weaken you when you travel. From the jet lag to the food, different organisms, parasites in the food, water, etc. So I'm going to tell you in another video why I personally would never travel. But unless I'm going for a title, then you have to because, you know, if you want to achieve something, you got to sometimes go to whomever you're going to. But anyways, back to the point. I would like to see Dillian White win this fight. Fury versus Wilder. I don't know who will win. If, if Fury wins, I would assume they would run it back for a third. I don't know if it would be immediate or fights in between. But if there is a fight in between, I want to see if Dillian White wins this fight. He get his title shot. He finally get a title shot. It is crazy to me that Deontay Wilder, excuse Deontay Wilder, <laughs> Dillian White has beat so many top tier fighters and never had a title shot. Never had a title shot. Ever. He lost to AJ in, I believe, his 17th fight. It was AJ's 16th fight. I believe he went in there with injuries. He had his shoulder repaired. And ever since that, he's been looking incredible with the power from Floor and Parker to knocking out Chazor and etc. He's got a lot of power. We talk about Rivas, but as a sore spot for some people, don't really need to bring it up. So I would like to see him win this, and I would like to see him get his title shot. I believe Dillian White would beat Tyson Fury. And I, th I think he could very well knock Tyson Fury out, and I definitely know he'll knock Deontay Wilder out. Because as he said in his interview, he's not going to be scared of him. He's going to do what you need to do against Wilder, and that's get up in his shit. And you got to understand, Dillian White's not a Ruiz where he's going to be hitting you with a bunch of pillows that are just in a barrage. He's going to be hurting you. Every hit is going to hurt you. He's a true heavyweight. He spoke on how he didn't want AJ to lose weight. He thought that was dumb, and I agree. When you're built up to be this tank, this powerful thing, <coughs> you don't lose your power. And if AJ really comes in lighter, I think that's bad for him. Also, I think it's bad if um, Ruiz comes in smaller, too, as Freddie Roach alluded to. That would be the worst thing in the world. But back to Dillian White. I finally figured out why the LDBC hates Dillian. It's because he's white. You can read it right here. <laughs> Let me end on that note. Tell me what y'all think. And Dillian, I hope you don't get found guilty of anything. No drugs later on because I want to see you do good because you did walk through the furnace. And I have put my channel on you being the best. Even if I jump up to a thousand subs, two, three, four, five, six, that won't change. I have stayed true to my word no matter what. I still want to know what happened with you, Cad. But at this point, I figure he's pretty much been cleared. Thank y'all again for watching.